I'm going to do a residential forecast for 2024 for Calgary's real estate market here. You know, where lots of topics happening at the moment. Um, the biggest probably being uh, in February here, coming into February, is the shortage of supply right now. Um, you know, but we're going to talk about that and other factors. We're also going to talk about is it better to be investing in Edmonton versus Calgary right now, the great debate as it were. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to be talking about interest rates. I'm going to be talking about a different um, segments of the marketplace. I'm going to be talking about uh, different parts of Calgary, uh, the price points. I'm going to be breaking down uh, the areas um, surrounding Calgary here. Uh, lots to go over here, so this is probably going to be a couple minutes. And in the comments, I'm going to break down um, the... Um, the different segments that I talk about in this uh, forecast here. A lot of this material is coming from the economists are from the Calgary Real Estate Board. So I want to give them uh, credit. I'm condensing a lot of this material here for you today. So the lending interest rates, uh, they've had a noticeable impact on our housing. It's been prompting uh, people to look at more affordable segments which is one of the reasons why apartments had such a stellar return last year and uh, diminished their return on inventory. It's also caused uh, some sellers right now, which I'm sure a lot of agents can attest to, uh, from refraining from getting into the marketplace um, just because of the uh, higher costs, not necessarily to moving up, uh, but the interest costs that would be associated to that have sidelined uh, some sellers and uh, has uh, further put a bit of a stronghold on the uh, inventory in Calgary here. So overall though, what is making Calgary such a hotbed? Well, we have had interprovincial migration, a uh, robust labor market. Those would probably be the two biggest things right now. And as well, uh, what that will do is that will constrict the vacancy rates and make things that much tighter and it'll cause vacancy rates to go up, forcing people to go into the marketplace because at some point they can actually rent, or pardon me, own uh, cheaper than they can actually own. So while the international uh, migration has influenced the uh, rental market, um, most of our demand right now is a, a result of the interprovincial uh, migration. So. I would kind of focus on that, although albeit that is slowing down a little bit and we expect that to slow down a little bit more in 2024, but still consider that to be a major impact. With regards to investors coming in, we still have a very strong interprovincial migration uh, for investors or um, people from out of province looking to invest in Calgary right now. Um, starting in uh, February here at the date that we're filming this is uh, February 7th, we're still expecting, uh, or we will be expecting some of those buyers that we're anticipating to be on the sideline or the fence for, um, or till the second or third quarter when interest rates are set to, um, to drop. We were expecting a lot of those buyers to come off the fence at that point, but in actuality right now, we're seeing those buyers come off the fence at this point because the pace of increase in property values and variety is forcing them to consider further that, um, that there's more opportunity now than they would have if they were to wait six months due to increased pricing. So um, if that were to happen, they're able to take advantage of the prices today and then with interest rates dropping in the future, they'd be able to, if they were on a, uh, on a fixed variable or an open variable, they'd be able to drop into a, um, uh, a lower interest rate at that point. And the speculation would be um, taking advantage of a double whammy. So that's kind of where buyers are at right now. Um, we do expect to see that the pricing in the higher segment homes to sort of subside or the demand uh, to subside a little bit, but still continue at a decent pace. Whereas the um, lower um, priced homes under 600,000, more so under 500 are still like hotcakes and uh, moving off of the grill at a accelerated pace here, so to speak. So 
Um, we can expect to see Calgary's population. It's forecasted to grow at about 3.6%, a further fueling growth and limiting the supply in Calgary. So don't expect the demand, or pardon me, the supply to uh, increase and ease that demand in the, uh, in the future here. So let's talk about some of the economic indicators here um, that are making our economy resilient in all, is basically the energy sector. Um, so there could be two potential uh, elephants in the closet there, as they say. One would be the um, uh, federal environmental policies where, you know, with the net zero housing and the emission caps, that could put a damper in the economic viability that's happening throughout right now in not just in Calgary, but in Alberta. Uh, investor hotspot. So <laughs> let's talk about uh, Calgary and Edmonton here for a bit. Um, as I had mentioned before, that Calgary continues to be and prove to be the right place to be investing in Calgary right now. We're seeing cap rates start to increase, albeit marginally, but we are definitely seeing purchase price um, certainly outweighing and benefiting investors that have been uh, purchasing here for the last uh, year, year and a half, and that will continue to grow. Uh, so what exactly took place in last year's residential sales market? Uh, well, with sales being down and listings also down by 13%, where sales were only down uh, 8%, that really caused inventory to drop below um, you know, which ultimately forced the benchmark price to go up 6% year over year. Now, it's important to note that the apartment sector um, has had to have the best price performance um, out of all the segments that include uh, single family uh, detached and row homes. Uh, these single family homes continue to have the lion's share of the market sales with um, at 46% with apartment sales at 28%. Townhomes at 16% and semi-attached at 8%. So does that make sense that uh, I could say that apartments uh, outpaced? Well, they certainly did because in terms of the uh, inventory absorption that we've had, as well as the, uh, the pricing, that's where you've seen uh, those gains attributed to. So in terms of affordability compared to Canada's two largest centers, uh, that being Toronto and Vancouver, Calgary's benchmark price is almost half of those cities right now, half. Um, and yet our affordability index is uh, some of the highest in the nation. So where are we at in terms of pricing here? Um, so single family homes, 675,000, that's up 7.64% year over year. Um, we can expect this trend to continue in the lower priced um, segment, as I had mentioned, while slowing slightly higher in the upper echelons of Calgary's residential single family market. Anticipated growth in the family sector is set to be at 4% in 2024. Moving on to semi detached, at um, the benchmark price being just about 605,000, that's up 7.4% year over year. So, what's happening or what can we expect here in 2024? Again, with the lack of inventory in the semi-attached market, we will continue to see um, probably prices to increase in this category. We can anticipate growth in semi-attached sector, which appears to be around 5.5% in 2024. Townhomes, now this one is uh, probably a market where investors should pay attention uh, if they're on a, um, the low residential side. So townhomes, Year over year, we're up about 13.5% year over year. That's up to around uh, close to $400,000. Why are townhomes going to be so popular this year? Well, the relative affordability in the townhome segment in 2024, it's going to continue to drive demand and further increase prices. Uh, we can expect uh, that they're forecasting the townhome uh, growth to be around 9% in 2024. So something to be uh, on the radar for if you're looking for not only a uh, great place to live, but a ROI, uh, I would look at, and I've said townhomes probably for the last year and a half, uh, viability and investment wise are uh, performance and KPIs there. And then rounding out and talking about apartments, um, the apartments uh, last year were up 
almost 15%, 13.49 year over year, up to around 302,000. Uh, affordability, that is going to continue to play a role in the apartment segment. Uh, continue, uh, segments continue success in conjunction with uh, just lifestyle, whereas in prior years, it used to be a lot based off of lifestyle there. So we can anticipate the growth in the apartment sector continue, to continue and looking strong to be around at nine and a half percent, that is similar in 2024 to townhomes. In the surrounding areas, we're talking about your Airdrie, Cochrane, Chestermere, Okotoks, uh, and Strathmore there. Airdrie had a uh, performance of about 506,000, up 4.8% year over year. So uh, with lack of new construction completion, it will continue to cause upper pressure on prices this year in Airdrie. So uh, Airdrie still continuing, albeit not at the pace it was at uh, two years ago. Cochrane, the benchmark price sitting around 521000 That's up about 4.16% year over year. We are starting to see increased inventory in Cochrane, which will likely lead to a more balanced market in 20. 24. Moving on to Chester Mirror. So the benchmark price at 652000 approximately, that's up 4.4% a year over year. Um, so not as high as the other communities that we saw, um, but we're looking at a benchmark price that's significantly higher than the other surrounding areas. So affordability, um, it's not as affordable as of the other areas, as I've mentioned. So Chestmere has actually some of the highest benchmark prices in the area there. This will cause supply levels to improve. And as a result, you Chestmere should see price growth slow, um, but will uh, continue, but just not at a rampant pace. And you can also expect that some of those buyers or would-be buyers may look at the other affordable Areas um, predominantly, possibly Airdrie and Okotoks. Um, Okotoks also saw some very positive growth last year. They're up 6.2%. Their benchmark price is close to $572,000. What caused that? Well, again, lack of inventory. Uh, it continues to be the driver in this market, so don't expect prices to come down too much as well. Okotoks just a great community to live in. I should know my parents live there. So uh, they like it. It has a lot of amenities. Um, it has that small town feel, but close enough to the big city. Um, I mentioned we were going to talk about the age-old debate, buying, living, Calgary versus Edmonton. So if you were investing in Calgary or be an investor in 2024, where should you put your money? Well, uh, Calgary is still drawing a larger interprovincial migration. It's assisting sales in higher price categories and making supply levels weak in Calgary. Whereas Edmonton lags behind Calgary in terms of pricing, sales, um, and just overall the, the uh, key performance indicators there. So we should start to see though that with Edmonton lagging behind, typically around 18 months, we should start to see uh, supply levels uh, start to weaken a little bit in Calgary, and, or pardon me, in um, uh, or tighten a little bit in Edmonton, and that's going to start forcing prices to increase. As uh, Edmonton's labor market is fairly strong as well, it should start to attract some uh, workers, and um, you should see some beneficial growth. So with that said, it seems like on the surface, Edmonton would be a clear-cut winner for investors. So where should you invest? Well, currently, there's 3.4 months worth of supply in Edmonton and under one month's worth of supply in Calgary for residential properties that are for sale. So if you were to look at price growth and increases, Calgary is still going to be the winner, believe it or not. So that's where I'm parking my dollars unless somebody can show me different. And if you've got any questions or you'd like to know more about the style of home, the community that you live in and how it's performing overall, by all means, give us a call. We'd love to give you uh, some assistance and uh, get you dialed in regardless of whether or not you're selling 403 
809-3523.